Last time we found that the demagnetizing field is related to the magnetization of the sample with a coefficient called demagnetizing factor and n sub d which is given as minus n sub dm is equal to demagnetizing field in SI and minus 4 pi n sub dm is equal to demagnetizing field in CGS EMU units. Now, I want to talk about the magnetizing factors of some important geometries. Uh, so, in order to have a demagnetizing field, as we have seen in the uh, previous discussion, we have to be creating free poles on the two sides of the specimen. And clearly, when we have a toroid, that's not happening. So, when we have a toroid geometry, since we have no free poles, uh, the, the the magnetizing field that we will have is going to be zero therefore the demagnetizing factor is zero so uh, remember the Rowland ring idea where we were trying to measure the magnetic properties of the samples as you can see the geometry dependent effects are eliminated by using the toroid so uh, Rowland ring was a great idea in order to measure the magnetic induction inside that is induced inside a specimen uh, independent of the geometry of the specimen. Now the second geometry that I will talk about is the cylinder. So in the case of a cylinder uh, and I'm, I'm going to talk about not a finite cylinder here so let's assume that this has an infinite uh, length okay so the height of the specimen is infinite so in this case if you look at the coordinate system that I have established here uh, the demagnetizing factor and the uh, in this on the z-axis will be approximately equal to zero and why is that because we have uh, the pole separation the north and south poles that you create on the cylinder by applying a field uh, along the z-axis is going to be uh, infinite so uh, the magnetic field created by a pole uh, will be the pole strength divided by r square where r goes to infinite uh, infinity so the magnetizing field goes to infinity on the other hand for the x and y axis uh, which are uh, basically symmetric uh, we can have uh, the demagnetizing factor for the magnetization along x axis equal to the demagnetizing factor for magnetization along the y axis because there is no preference they have exactly the same shape just a radial distance r from the center so these demagnetizing factors are equal to 1 over 2. So in the case of a long cylinder, we have approximately 1 over 2 demagnetizing factors uh, along the radial axis. Uh, and we have uh, no demagnetizing factor uh, along the length of the specimen. Now, if we have a spherical distribution, uh, a spherical geometry, now there, there will be no preference for X or Y or Z. They would be exactly symmetrically the same. So from symmetry here, we would find that the demagnetizing factors for uh, magnetizations along X axis, Y axis and Z axis should be the same and they are equal to one-third um, and as you might have noticed I seem to be getting this sum and the x and the y and the z equals to one all the time and I'm going to talk about why that is the case uh, or demonstrate why that should be the case for an infinite sheet okay so for the uh, spherical geometry we have uh, equal demagnetizing factors for x, y, and z axis magnetizations, and it is one third. In the case of an infinite sheet, which resembles a thin film structure here, um, we have 
infinite distance between the poles uh, infinite distance so it's going to be similar to the um, cylinder on x and y axis so if you create a north pole and south pole uh, in uh, on, on the x-axis or uh, on the y-axis uh, you will see that the separation between them is infinite therefore we must have and the x is equal to and the y is equal to zero which leaves for us and the z is equal to one so the demagnetizing factors for an infinite sheet uh, are zero in the plane of the film and one perpendicular to the plane of the film okay so uh, i would like to make a comment about why we have uh, the summation of uh, demagnetizing factors along x y and z equal to one so let's talk about um, this for a moment y is and the x plus and the y plus and the z equal to one well so uh, if you think about the tin metal sheet uh, which is our infinite sheet uh, that i just talked about um, the demagnetizing field hd is equal to minus nd times m this is uh, an si equation once again and uh, what would be the maximum value of the demagnetizing field i could ever have the maximum value of the demagnetizing field would correspond to the situation where all the moments uh, will contribute to the demagnetizing field so so this will occur when all mag uh, magnetic moments contribute so that means you have uh, the demagnetizing field equal to uh, maximum value equal to minus ms the saturation magnetization so this implies that the maximum value of the demagnetizing factor is equal to one uh, so if you go back to your tin metal sheet what is the separation between the poles when we try to magnetize it along the z uh, axis well we will see that there is almost no distance between the two poles so uh, if i th think about the infinite sheet um, the hd the magnetizing field on the z axis is going to be equal to the pole strength that i'm creating divided by r square where r is going to zero so the poles are close to each other therefore hdz has to become hdz maximum possible value which is uh, equal to minus ms so in indeed and these and the z must be equal to zero so in general uh, we find that uh, the three degrees of freedom we have x y and z will basically uh, account accounts for all possible free pole configurations So giving us a total of and the x and the y 
and dz equal to 1. Okay, so one last geometry that I haven't talked about, that is number 5 is ellipsoid. Ellipsoid is a very uh, special geometry. And first of all, how do you obtain an ellipsoid? You have an ellipse that you uh, rotate uh, around the C axis, A axis or B axis uh, in, in, so that you obtain an ellipsoid. Now you can rotate it uh, symmetrically around the C axis, in which case you get a prolate spheroid, which looks like a rod, or you can rotate it uh, uh, about the A axis, in which case you get an oblate spheroid, which is a disc. Okay, so why are these uh, geometries so important? Well, because of the, the way these field lines behave, uh, so you have the field lines coming out of the North Pole approaching the South Pole. If you look at inside an ellipsoid, you will find that ellipsoid is really the only geometry in which you have completely uniform uh, magnetization. Okay, so it is a very special geometry uh, that has a truly uniform magnetization. So this is only uh, only geometry with a truly uniform magnetization and therefore we can calculate the free poles, free pole con uh, configuration and the corresponding uh, demagnetizing field uh, for this one. So uh, other shapes can be approximated, other shapes can be approximated using ellipsoids. So that is one way of uh, calculating uh, demagnetizing uh, factors. Okay, so how can uh, we uh, find out the demagnetizing factor for our geometry? Well, there are tabulated values and graphs using these ellipsoids. Uh, you can see that from uh, Bozort's book on ferromagnetism, the magnetizing factors for various samples were calculated. And you can see the demagnetizing factors. Um, here it's, it says Nd divided by 4 pi, uh, which means um, the uh, the magnetizing field was defined as uh, minus NDM and in CGS units so that you would have to divide ND by 4 pi in order to get the right conversion. Now uh, you can see that we have a magnetic field applied parallel to the long axis, uh, different types of geometry, it's oblate ellipsoid, prolate ellipsoid, or cylindrical structures, etc., how the demagnetizing factors change with the ratio of long axis to short axis. So one can easily read demagnetizing factors for a given geometry uh, using uh, this graph, this plot, or uh, looking at some tabular data. It's also possible to obtain demagnetizing factors that directly using three-dimensional electromagnetic field simulations uh, this was done in this paper by uh, Puch, Kramer and Chen, uh, for example. Uh, this is basically a finite element simulation. Uh, software like Comsol or ANSYS uh, can be used in order to perform these simulations and directly calculate the um, demagnetizing field uh, by inputting the known uh, vibrating specimen magnetometry MH or BH measurements uh, for the given geometry. There are also approximate uh, calculations uh, once again one can do for different geometries. Uh, this is given uh, in Kaliti and Graham for example for an oblate spheroid or disc where you have A and A less than B equals to C and C over A ratio is equal to M, we can calculate NX, NY, NZ, which are called ABC here, uh, <clears throat> using this simple uh, expression. 
Okay, so we have uh, graphs, we have tabular data, we can look up from uh, different places and uh, literature. Uh, we can do direct simulations using uh, three-dimensional finite element simulations. We can calculate the magnetizing fields or we can use approximate expressions. And the trick here is to make, uh, make sure that you find a correct approximation by looking at the relationship between an ellipsoid and the geometry that you have. Okay, so we talked about the magnetizing factors. The magnetizing factors appear in the magnetizing field uh, HD. Uh, the demagnetizing field occurs due to the free poles that we create in magnetizing the sample uh, and it is opposing the applied field. That's always the case. It is um, anti-parallel to the magnetization and with a coefficient called the demagnetizing factor. The demagnetizing factor is zero for Tori because it has no free poles. It is zero in the long axis of a cylinder uh, because we have infinite separation between the poles for a long cylinder and it is one half for uh, x and y axis uh, magnetizations. For a sphere uh, we have due to symmetry x, y and z the same type of uh, free pole formation in magnetizing the sample so they are all equal to one third. For an infinite sheet uh, along the infinite axes, x and y axes, we have zero uh, demagnetizing factor. Again, we have infinite separation between free poles, but in, in the z axis, on the other hand, we have almost no separation. The demagnetizing factor is one. So but that basically explains why we have uh, the maximum value of one for a demagnetizing factor because that gives you the maximum possible demagnetizing field which is minus ms. All the moments contribute to the demagnetizing field. The only geometry that has a uniform magnetization, a truly uniform magnetization in the sample is ellipsoid. Therefore, demagnetizing factors are calculated for ellipsoids with different shapes here is a general ellipsoid. If you rotate an ellipse around its c-axis, you can get a prolate sp spheroid, which is a rod. Uh, if you rotate it around the a-axis, you can get an oblate spheroid, which is a disc. So we can use these oblate or prolate spheroids or um, um, similar uh, geometries in order to get the, the demagnetizing factor approximate for our uh, sample by looking at this these graphs or uh, looking at some tabular data it's also possible to do finite element simulations or use approximate expressions in order to get the proper uh, demagnetizing factor to use in our calculations